What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we got a good one for ya. This past weekend, UFC 299. Yes, me and Sweet T were there. We witnessed every flipping fight, especially on the main card. But the most talked about fight on that card was the main event, Sean O'Malley versus Cheeto Vera. Two, baby. Now, we all know what happened in the first fight. Cheeto Vera ended up TK on him. Obviously, there was some damage done to Sean O'Malley's lead leg, and he had drop foot. He couldn't stand up. You know, he said that was the cause of him losing that fight. So, we had the rematch. And I don't know if you guys have seen the pictures and stuff. After the fight, man, Cheeto Vera's face was bloodied up. And, of course, Sean O'Malley's got his hand in a cast. He's limping, so you know some bombs were thrown. So, today, I'm going to be breaking down each round step by step quickly what uh music group was that but anyway we're gonna be breaking it down step by step each round let's get into the video what up everybody everybody what's up everybody Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Our team of gourmet chefs create each meal using only ingredients with integrity to help you feel your best all day long. Factor's delicious, ready to eat meals make eating better every day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready with pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. You'll have over 35 different options a week to choose from, including keto, Calorie Smart, Vegan Plus Veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly planning even more delicious. Get started today and have a feel-good week of meals ready to go. Feel up fast with Factor's restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat whenever you are. Sign up and save, but we've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. I love Factor because my day is jam-packed with training, teaching karate classes, so it's easy for me to stick a meal in in only two minutes. It's ready, delicious, and nutritious. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code WONDERBOY50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life. Two free wellness shots from three available flavors for every order while you are an active subscriber. Again, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code WONDERBOY50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life. So sign up now. All right, now before we get into round one, I wanted to say a few things. Kind of my mindset going into this fight on how I thought each guy would win the fight. So going into this fight, there was a few things that I was thinking about. Number one, starting with Cheeto. I feel like he had to make this fight really, really dirty. A good, dirty boxing fight. Make it ugly almost. Because everybody knows O'Malley is a range fighter. He's a counter striker as well. He loves to keep the range. Kind of like Izzy Adesanya, throwing a lot of feints and things like that. I feel like Cheeto needed to kind of go the Sean Strickland route, not reacting to the feints, ignoring those and walking through those feints to get this guy up against the fence and just walk through his techniques and to just make this fight dirty, get in his face, grab a hold of him, hang on his neck a lot, throw that dirty boxing uppercuts, throwing knees. He didn't need to respect the range so much. So in order for him to win this fight, I felt like he had to make the fight dirty. And O'Malley, obviously, just do what you do, O'Malley. Keep the fight at range, pick him apart, throwing your feints and things like that. So that was kind of my mindset going in. Now, going back and looking at round one, Cheeto came out very, very hesitant. Let's talk about him first. First round, I thought he was really relaxed, but a little too relaxed, if you know what I mean. He let O'Malley get off a few shots earlier on in that fight and didn't answer back with anything else. You just kind of gave him a freebie almost. He started opening up later at the end of, the, of that first round, the second half of it, and started landing some kicks, some strikes, but not a whole lot of power shots. O'Malley was really, really good at keeping the distance. That's how he fights. O'Malley was throwing, uh, especially in the first round, O'Malley was throwing a ton of feints. One of two reasons why he was throwing a lot of feints. Obviously, one, when you throw a lot of feints, you can use your feints to keep your opponent at bay, to keep them from rushing in, to looking for the takedown, to try to get in close. You're throwing so many feints, your opponent really doesn't know what's coming, so they stay away. Two, you can almost dull the senses 
when it comes to the feints. You're throwing so many feints that your opponent really doesn't know how to react to them because you're throwing so many. And when you actually do throw a, a full-blown technique, their reaction is so slow because of them reacting to so many feints that they don't get out of the way enough. Their, their reactions have kind of dulled down and they're getting hit with these shots now because you've seen so many feints, you're tired to them. It dulls your senses a little bit in your reaction time. So I think that's why he was throwing so many feints in that first round. Now O'Malley was doing what O'Malley does. I saw a lot of shots to the body in that first round, which normally I don't see a whole lot of that from O'Malley, but he was throwing some good twos to the body to soften him up down low, or later on the round to get him thinking low, maybe later on the round he's gonna come up with a head kick or fake down low, come up high with the two, but he was throwing a lot of twos to the body. That was round one, definitely went to O'Malley. Round two breakdown, here we go. We're gonna start off with my man, Cheeto. Well, Cheeto through the same combination pretty much the entire round. The one-two head kick, one-two head kick. And I think it had to do with Sean O'Malley's feints, man. His feint put Cheeto in a box, dude. As soon as the first and the second round started, Cheeto ran to the middle and got control of center of the octagon. Same thing happened in the second round. Pretty much predominantly kept the center of the octagon the entire time, which was good. Keeping your opponent on, your, on his toes, keeping his back up against the fence, but he did nothing with it. I figured for sure Cheeto's gonna look to try to get the takedown. For sure Cheeto's gonna try to close the gap, cut the cage off, and hem him up against the fence. Especially when you got a guy as a high level of a striker as, as Sean O'Malley is, you're gonna try to do that. You're not gonna sit there and try to bang it out with one of the best strikers in the division. And guess what he did? He did exactly that. He didn't try to hem him up. He kept the center of the octagon, yes, but he did nothing with it. And O'Malley put him in a box. O'Malley did whatever he wanted. He was throwing spin back kicks. He was mixing up his combinations as well. Switching sides, not just going to the body, not just going to the head, but mixing up his combinations, going down low, going up high. And Cheeto had no idea what was coming and where these techniques were coming. That's the difference between a high level striker and somebody, I'm not saying that Cheeto is not just terrible. I mean, he's fighting for the title, that's for sure. But you got to throw more than just simple basic combinations. One, two, kick, one, two, kick, kick, one, two. You got to be able to mix it up and to be able to change up the directions of your techniques as well. Throughout the whole second round, he was faking techniques or acting like he was for sure going to throw a jab to the body and he would stop halfway, which I thought was really cool in this second round that O'Malley did and it caught my eye. He went to throw a flying knee, but he stopped halfway. It was almost like, oh, he's for sure going to throw this knee, but he stopped. And in Cheeto's eyes, he thought it was coming, so he covered up. That was his mistake for thinking it was coming. Because the second time, he did the exact same thing. He actually threw the knee, and it landed. So it was a tell. It was like he just ninja'd Cheeto's brain. All right, let me let me make this knee as dramatic as possible, but not throw the knee. So the second time, he threw that same exact knee, and instead of faking it, he really threw it and nailed him right in the chin. But I gotta say, there, maybe there's something to this beard thing, because he smoked him with that knee and it almost like didn't even face Cheeto. It hurt him. Oh, it hurt him. But Cheeto didn't show it because he backed immediately up to the cage. So that's how you knew he was hurt because throughout the entire first and second round, Cheeto kept the center of the octagon. But when he got need, what did he do? He backed up. He was hurt. He was trying to recover. But maybe if it wasn't for that beard, maybe he would have he would have went out. But that was sick. Another cool thing that I saw O'Malley do in that second round, which I'm going to have to use next time, but you got to be careful with this because you don't want to get spin back kicked in the face. But Cheeto kept throwing that body kick. So what happened was Cheeto was keeping O'Malley's back up against the fence pretty much the whole time. But O'Malley used his kick. He caught it and lifted it up. And holding on to his leg, he circled and put himself to the center of the cage and put Cheeto's back to the cage while holding his foot up the whole time he switched he switched directions, which I thought was pretty cool. I've never seen that done before. Use a leg kick, hold on to that leg kick to be able to get your back off the cage. Super smart. I'm going to use that O'Malley. That was sick. But hands down, O'Malley was picking it up, still putting Cheeto in a box. And Cheeto, at this moment in time, what do you do, man? What do you do, Cheeto? You have to close the gap. You got to hem this guy up from picking you apart because he's just tearing you up right now. O'Malley, second round, goes to you, man, without a doubt. Moving on to number three.
Now, one thing that I noticed right off the bat in the third round that I was kind of watching both fighters were their stances. If you notice in the third round, first, second, and third round, O'Malley's bouncing on his toes. He's actually on all of his toes with both feet. And normally in a fighting stance, the front foot flat, maybe the back heel is off the ground, but he's on bouncing on both toes and he's moving and he's almost like he's gliding across the floor. And now, even though Cheeto was a little bit more aggressive going into the, right at the beginning in this third round, he was hitting air. Why why that was was because if you look at Cheeto's fighting stance, normally in your fighting stance you want to be on your toes, but his fighting stance, his back heel was flat. It was stationary. It was dragging his back foot, kind of walking down. He was kind of plodding down the path. And when it was time for him to blitz and explode forward, he couldn't do it because his back heel. So if you're ever fighting and you're wanting to close the gap, you have to get that back heel up off the floor and on your toes, just like the fastest people in the world, world-class sprinters. You will never see them start with their feet flat. They always get both heels up on their toes, ready to take off. And O'Malley was doing that the entire time. He's able to close the gap. He's able to slide out of the way anytime Cheeto was aggressing forward. Cheeto, you got to learn to get that back heel up off of the floor. O'Malley in the third round is really starting to pick up his feints now, really being more aggressive with his feints and not just fainting, but he'll faint two or three times and then actually throw a combination. Therefore, Cheeto's like, uh, when are you, th I don't know when you're going to throw your technique because there's so many feints behind it. And it got to the point where as that round progressed, he just started covering up off of everything. Every time he would faint, every time he would throw a technique, Cheeto, all he could do was just cover up. You know, I had a buddy of mine said it really, really well, is that whenever he would spar with me or any high level striker, especially O'Malley, when guys are playing chess, these guys like O'Malley are playing four dimensional chess, man. They're just so ahead of the game. You know, their angle change and they're moving in and out. They can fight moving forward, they can fight backing up. If he was playing four-dimensional chess against Cheeto, and Cheeto's just playing regular chess. He's playing checkers, and O'Malley's playing four-dimensional chess. It's crazy. So he's putting Cheeto more and more into this box, and Cheeto's really having a hard time knowing when to move forward, because when he does move forward, either he's getting counting or he's hitting air. So he's getting desperate now. So later on in that third round, he was a little more aggressive. There was one punch that landed, and everybody went crazy, but it didn't hurt. O'Malley one bit, but it did kind of give Cheeto a little hype, right? Give him a little hyped up so he started to go a little harder, but nothing was landing. Do a hard roundhouse kick. Again, basic, easy to block. O'Malley saw it coming a mile away. So at this point, Cheeto is starting to do this, not knowing what to do with his movement and angle changes, and O'Malley starting to do this, man. At this point, it's like, Cheeto, you got to close the gap. You got to get this guy down. You got to look for your takedowns, man. You're getting beat standing up. Go to something else. And on to the third round. Man, that was definitely a better round for Cheeto. Cheeto came out dirty, hanging on his head, in O'Malley's face, making O'Malley work. Now, I don't know if that was his plan to begin with, to so wait to the later, you know, fourth and fifth round to do this, but he should have done that from the beginning. If he'd have done this in the beginning, we would have had a totally different fight on our hands because first half of that fourth round, he was all over O'Malley pulling on the head, throwing the knees. He, had, he actually hit him with a few knees, a few left hands, bloodied O'Malley's nose. So now his nose is bleeding, which makes it harder for you to breathe. You have to open your mouth in order to breathe because you can't suck that blood down your throat if you're breathing through your nose. But you gotta understand, he shouldn't have done that from the beginning. This is O'Malley's game. If you're gonna let somebody who's a striker like O'Malley, let him strike, thinking that he's gonna fatigue, you're, you're mistaken. This is what he does. He can throw a million strikes and not get tired. But what does make him tired is backing up the entire time. When guys are hanging on his head, when he's grabbing a hold of the arms, that's what fatigues a striker. You gotta hang, you gotta make this thing dirty. Second half of that fourth round, it went back to the first round. It went back just like second and third round. O'Malley picking his shots, angle changing, but he is fatiguing now because of that first half of that fourth round. He's got to continue to do so if he's going to get a W, if he's going to try to get a knockout. you got to fatigue this guy. You should have done it at the beginning of the fight, though. But again, that was a closer round for Cheeto. Let's see what happens in the fifth round. Man, fifth and final round. What a flipping fifth round. Let me tell you, man, right off of the bat. Now, going into this fifth round, Cheeto really had to pull something out of the hat, dude. He had to go out there. He had to try to really push it to him, take him down, try something new. But did he? Nope, he didn't. I think he just took too much damage and O'Malley 
did what O'Malley does best and put Cheeto in a box. He had no idea what to do. He covered up most of the time. He hit Cheeto with a pulling right hand, which I think he broke his hand in that. If you notice, throughout the remainder of that fifth round, he wasn't throwing that right hand as much or as hard because he broke it on Cheeto's big old nog with that right hand with that. But it hurt him. It hurt Cheeto, and literally Cheeto backed up against the fence. And the majority of the fight kept Cheeto there with that back up against the fence, just putting him in the box with his feints, his angle changing, big roundhouse kicks, do some spin back kicks to the body. But there was just nothing that Cheeto could do. I mean, when you go out there and try to strike with one of the best strikers in the UFC and in that division, you're playing checkers with a guy who's playing four-dimensional chess. And this guy was on point the entire time. So tuned in to his opponent. Every time Cheeto tried to close the gap, O'Malley was sliding back. Or he was meeting him in the middle with his own strike or knee. Like I said, I feel like if he would have been dirty and really, really aggressive in the beginning, yes, he would have taken some damage there, but a whole lot less than he would have taken just standing back and waiting on O'Malley to come to him. Great fight, O'Malley. You're the champ, man. I'm looking forward to seeing you fight again. It was awesome to see you live. That was the breakdown from round one to round five all O'Malley. Now you gotta heal up, buddy. I think you got a broken hand. I think you hurt your feet. Might have been some of those front kicks you hit an elbow. Not sure, but it, some of those made me cringe just a little bit. Just imagining, I've done that before, throwing a front kick and hitting dude's elbows. Oh my gosh, terrible. But anyway, amazing fight, my man. Congratulations to you, Sean O'Malley. You the man, can't wait to see you fight again. Guys, if you like this breakdown, hit that subscribe button. Throw some comments down below. You know the deal. Let us know what you guys wanna post up, what y'all wanna see next. Let me know. We love you. Peace.